Today, I'm gonna to teach you guys how you can tell if that bottle of wine has gone bad. This is gonna be a critical skill to have, whether you're into wine making or just generally into wines. In front of me, I've got a few wines that I would say have gone bad and intentionally so in this case, so we'll get to that. But first I'll talk about some visual indications that a wine has gone bad. Because ideally, you know, if you're at the wine store, you don't really want to purchase a bottle only to find out that it's bad by the time you get home. Something you'll often notice with a red wine that's starting to essentially decompose is that it'll start to get kind of cloudy. Um, you'll often find that it'll start to deposit some pigment onto the side of the bottle. It'll look like some varnish almost. And you'll notice it if you kind of turn the bottle, you'll see a little ring of color. And that's not really something you see in a good clean wine. It's more as things start to break down in that wine. Now don't confuse this with tartrate crystals, which aren't necessarily a sign of a bad wine. That would be when your tartaric acid crystallizes into potassium by tartrate and deposits in the bottom of the, the bottle. People might call it sediment. It's not a big deal. Don't consider that a big indication. Another thing to watch for is the cork. Um, if the cork is being pushed out of the bottle, that's obviously a bad sign. It indicates that wine probably has got really, really hot at some point or that there's some sort of secondary fermentation happening in the bottle that really should not be happening. You'll also notice that the color, instead of being this deep, rich purple or bright uh, reddish purple with almost a sparkle to it, will kind of go to like a terracotta or like a red clay where it's got a little hint of brown into it. You're going to want to watch out for that and you're, you're going to struggle to really see this in the bottle because as you know, often reds are bottled in green or maybe even brown bottles. With a white wine, what you'll sometimes notice is that it'll go from this kind of yellow um, dandelion kind of color to more of like a copper or even extending to a brown color in the bottle. And if it's, you know, heading towards that brown end of the spectrum, that's a major red flag. I would stay far, far away from that bottle. Something you'll also sometimes notice is some sort of like a film on the wine. You're really going to rarely see this in the bottle, but you will see this if you're a wine maker. You'll see it when this wine is in bulk. And those are these bad, these bad yeast strains, the kinds that make things like sherry, but you don't want them in your wine. So keep your eyes out for that. Now, more often than not though, it's gonna be your sense of smell that gives the dead giveaway of if your wine is bad. And I'm gonna explain this stuff to you, but I'm gonna also give you some homework, which is to basically, if you, if you have a bottle of wine, drink it just like you normally would, but leave like a tablespoon in the bottom and put a topper on it and smell it every couple days for a couple weeks. And that's gonna really give you that experience smelling what can happen to a wine in the various stages and those are going to be your oxidative wine faults but they're also kind of the more common things that are going to happen as these wines get over the hump so when a wine used to be good but now it's not so good anymore and make sure you hit subscribe so that once you have done your homework you can come back and mention in the comments what you notice and i will be sure to respond to your comments the first stage of oxidation is going to be pretty mild. It's, it's more going to be this loss of favorable characteristics versus this gaining of unfavorable characteristics. So you'll notice a, a loss of aroma. The wine kind of becomes flat smelling. There's just not much to it like there once was. In a red wine, sometimes those fruitier kind of esters will go away and what you'll smell is the oak. So that's kind of step one of a wine kind of heading in the wrong direction. Now these wines in front of us, these two have been sitting out for about four days. I just put a coaster on the top so they don't evaporate. And I would say they're both in that stage of loss of 
properties, lots of favorable characteristics. The red wine is, it's actually starting to lean towards this like nutty end of the spectrum, but it's got that kind of loss of smell and gain of maybe a little bit more oak than what was intended because it's no longer hiding or blending in with that fruit. This white, man, it once was a great wine. This is a um, Traminette. It had the citrus aromas, uh, some pear, some orange peel. And now it's just honestly almost smells like water. It just doesn't have that pop that it once had. So it's a shame. Another thing you'll sometimes find, I find it to be surprisingly not that common, but it's kind of the thing everyone associates with an oxidized wine, which is vinegar. So as we know, wine will and can ultimately turn into vinegar if it's exposed to too much air. When it's really, really subtle, this acetic acid or volatile acidity, it can actually express itself kind of like fruitiness, but pretty quickly it smells like you're drinking a jar of pickles. So obviously, if your wine smells like a jar of pickles, you got a problem. That's not really how that wine was ever intended to be smelling. What I find to be a lot more common is kind of the second stage of this process. So it's when the, the vinegar uh, esterifies with the alcohol in the wine. So it creates something called ethyl acetate and it smells like acetone or nail polish remover. It's really unpleasant. You might, if you're inexperienced, think it smells strong, uh, but if you catch that, you know, nail polish remover smell, stay clear. I actually once went to a winery next to a nail salon, which was a terrible decision. The whole place smelled like ethyl acetate, one of the worst wine flaws you can smell. Just not cool. Now the third way that a wine can oxidize, and this is gonna be a pretty common way it's gonna happen in the bottle, especially as it gets five, six, seven years old on past, that's gonna be acetaldehyde. It's an oxidation of the actual ethanol in the wine. Often it's caused by a bacteria, acetobacter. It also can just happen chemically. This is probably the most favorable way that a wine can essentially go bad, as I, as I call it, where it gets kind of nutty. Um, some people prefer this. It kind of tastes like a port or like a sherry. In my book, it's bad. It's not good. I don't want my wines to do that, but it's, it's highly subjective. So if you like that, you might be the person that likes those old, old wines, maybe 20 year old wines, but sorry for you, it's gonna be expensive. <laughs> so now I'll talk about some ways that a wine hasn't necessarily gone bad, but just is bad. It was bad from the start. Uh, one of those is gonna be what we call Brett. So sorry if your name's Brett, nothing against you. Brettanomyces, it's, it's a yeast, it's a spoilage yeast in wine and it can make the wine smell like a horse or like a barnyard, like horse sweat. Sometimes it can smell like a Band-Aid. For the most part, this isn't something that you want in a wine, but with the caveat that if it's super, super subtle, it can add character to a red wine. So I'm gonna call that bad. Some people or in the smallest and smallest of uh, doses, maybe not bad. Next will be what we call a, uh, a corked wine or a corky wine or cork taint in the wine. This is a chemical TCA and it's really, really subtle, but it's a thing that happens. It, it can smell like um, wet cardboard or even kind of like a moldy basement kind of smell. Again, it's pretty subtle, but it's a generally considered a flaw. If you're a professional sommelier, you're always sniffing out for this, trying to see if the wine is corked. It's also why you see people 
sniffing the cork at a restaurant. I will say though, nine out of 10 people sniffing the cork have no idea how to identify a good and a bad wine. And they're probably rejecting some pretty good wines. The next one is also, I would say super common. And that is what we call a cooked wine. Now this is especially gonna be common for wines that are be, being transported long distances like overseas in a shipping container. A shipping container can get to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit and stay there for days. So obviously that's not gonna be good for a wine. That's like I said, one of the ways you might see a cork pushing out of the wine. And what you're gonna see happen there is this kind of accelerated aging of the wine. Um, and also sometimes this change from fresh fruit type smells and flavors to cooked fruit or jammy type smells or flavors. This wine here is a um, Alvarino, which is an incredible white wine if you know it. And it's normally insanely aromatic. It just hits you with these incredible aromas in the apple pear family. This one smells, so this is the same wine that has not been cooked. And wow, it smells like I just cut up a bunch of pears and shoved my face in them. This one, I put on the stove at 140 degrees C for an hour and then cooled it back down. And it's, uh, it's kind of like the white wine that has been sat out for four days in the air. It just smells, there's just not a lot of smell left anymore. It's kind of a dull wine where it once was this incredible, vibrant, rocking wine. So white wines are interesting. I, when I make a white wine, I keep it cool and it always stays cool. It never really leaves the basement until I'm bringing it to someone's house to be drank or we're popping it open at our house. And holy smokes, the fruit on these wines is incredible. Whereas when you buy a white wine at the store, that's gonna be pretty rare to get that much nose on the wine. And it's just because, you know, how do you transport it? You, If you're spending enough money, you're gonna transport it in a refrigerated truck. That's just not gonna be the case if you're in that sub, you know, $20 range. And finally, another one, it's gonna essentially do a very similar thing to a cooked or cooking the wine. And that's gonna be when the wine has been exposed to light or they call it light strike. You're not really gonna see this in a red wine and the reason being is because they're in green glass which blocks the spectrum of light that could damage that wine. But you are gonna see this in white wines and you're also gonna see it in rosés. It's honestly unfortunate that we bottle rosés in clear glass when if you could just bottle it in green glass, it wouldn't be a problem. But people wanna see that pink color, they wanna judge that wine by its color. So unfortunately, you're not gonna really get to experience that wine as it was intended because of light strike. There are tons of more wine flaws. I'll often talk about this on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash make wine. So be sure to swing by there if you want to learn more. And thank you so much for watching.